what's up? I'm Adam. Corey. We are Saint Asonia, and you're watching Pure Grain Audio. Well, really, the uh, the word Asonia uh, we were throwing around, kicking around the studio for a long time. It kind of means to be tone deaf, basically. So we kind of thought that was somewhat funny and ironic <laughs> for a band name. Uh, yeah, so that word was around for a long time, and then I think it was just one of those things we were sitting around the table trying to. It's, it's part of the one of the hardest things about being in a new band is coming up with a name and stuff. Yeah. So somebody just said Saint Sony, I think, to give it like a maybe a little positive vibe or whatever and it sounded good. So it, you know, it rolled off stuck the tongue rolled off the tongue good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it wasn't it wasn't even really an idea. Like I mean we Mike reached out to me a long time ago and just just to do some writing together. It, we had no intention of really making a band or a record even, you know, for that matter. We just wanted to get together and do some writing. We were both you know, just doing our own thing. And, um, so the writing process just went really well. We just, you know, we gelled and we meshed pretty, you know, pretty good. And, and we ended up writing more songs than we thought we were going to. And um, I still had my deal with RCA. So we, you know, we decided to make a three song demo. And so we recorded three of the songs that we wrote. And yeah, here we are, you know, we just ended up making a- Very organic. Yeah, yeah making very a, organic. a full record. When I first left Three Days Grace, Rich was Rich uh, had always so I've always known I've known Rich for a long time, just being Finger Eleven, you know, a couple of Canadian bands or whatever. So he's always been around, and and when I left Three Days, um, he was always a part of what I was doing, whether it was like an acoustic thing or whatever. I was just hanging out with him doing stuff. So yeah, um, Rich, you know, was uh, part of it for a while, and we've all known Corey forever and stuff. So I mean. It was just, it was, again, it was just a natural thing where, you know, we didn't really think about it. We just reached out to Corey. Yeah, and, every, yeah everybody knew each other from touring together through the years and stuff. And I mean, it was a big thing. Everybody was such a big fan. I'd called Mike, you know, a few years even before that. You know, I said, hey, man, what are you doing? And at that time, he was jamming, doing the Newstead thing, I think. Um, and so, you know, when he gave me the call, I was like, of course, I still want to play with you. And, and he kind of told me the whole scenario and that, uh, him and I have been, been jamming some songs and I was like, this guy's voice is, you know, one of the most unique in music. So it was awesome to, you know, come from a, you know, my whole family singers. I'm like, this guy's got such a unique thing. I still, I'm in a band with him. I still don't understand. He's got like levels to his voices. It sounds like one note, but there's four notes happening at the same time. I'm like, what are you doing? How do you do that? You know, like, <laughs> this is a little mechanism. Here. Just, I got the implant. Like, five. <laughs> five boys. It's so definitely a different energy, you know, like I, you got different spirits on stage, you know, like that whole, I mean, he, he's a giant coming your way, you know, like 100 miles an hour. And I remember we, our first show is uh, was at Rock on the Range. And, I, you know, I remember we were looking at the video of it and there's this one point where both of us decide to just immediately run the other way. And we're like, <laughs> you know, kind of that. But it's, you know, it, Rich is a ma maniac on drums. I mean, he's he's just our he's a wild character animal, you know. And uh, Mushok is always like, you know, just bringing it and shredding it. So you know, the energy's it's fun. You know, the first few shows I think we spent mo most of the time looking at each other, trying to you know, oh yeah, there's the crowd. You know, look at that move. <laughs> Definitely not a one-time thing. This band, yeah, it's been Saint Sony is around. Gonna be here for a while, man, for sure. Yeah, I mean a lot. Yeah, there's a definitely a lot of you know, people mention. You know, it's a super group, and normally that's got a stigma attached to it. It'll be one record, see you later. But no, this this record or this band is here to stay for sure. Yeah, yeah. We've already got a, a, a lot of music, you know, that we've written that's kicking around possibly for the next record. So you know, we're not going anywhere. Came pretty natural, man. It was, you know, it, I think working with uh, Johnny K or whatever uh, in the studio, it just, it gave, that he gave it, you know, his little touch or whatever. And for Mike and I, it was just, Mike just laid down what he does, you know, and what he did, and I did the same. And it, again, it was pretty organic. Like the whole, the whole, everything about this band has been very sort of raw and real and, and organic. So we didn't overthink the sound or we didn't overthink anything, you know production all that stuff we yeah. just went in and laid it down from heavy to light i mean i like that some of the lighter songs are the heaviest songs you know lyrical content um it's a wide variety. it's a you know, 
songs are up tempo, low tempo. You know, it's it's a variety, so it's not a linear record at all. You know, that's what's cool about the live show, also. It's been great. It's been you know more than you could ask for, man. Like the crowds are awesome. Um, people are already you already know the songs. They're already singing the lyrics back, and it's yeah. a great feeling. So um, yeah, it's just been the response has been really good, and the, the record turned out really well you know something that we're really proud of so this Mike I mean Mike Mike was with music and Adam with lyrics on this yeah. this record I mean they did such a great job you know Mike was sending me some of the stuff they were doing uh, in the beginning I was just blown away and you know these guys had a lot to express over the last couple of years it started building that Where's my new story in life going to be at? And I think uh, Adam and Mike did a great job as far as reaching deep and uh, really expressing themselves truly and not trying to, let me write for this or that. It was just really writing from the heart and, you know, like you said, making it a natural feeling. Yeah, for sure, man. That changes nightly. It does. Because you know, I think you get a group of people over here that are singing Blow Me Wide Open and it gets you like it deeper into it and then uh, the other night like uh, dying slowly i mean th these kids were like whoa and they were so you know you're like it makes you feel like it's an anthem so that particular night it would be that song uh seems you know, like every night i think let me live my life gets, gets that's fired the, up. The, the yeah absolutely yeah, last yeah. night they're you know watching everybody just the entire crowd bounce and stuff and uh the what is it wasted time uh yeah. wasting time the lighter thing, whether it's a big place now or a small place, the <laughs> lighters and we've uh, this tour we we're playing some pretty small places. It was so bright in the club, felt like the club lights were on. I was like, "That's awesome." I think "Let Me Live My Life" for me it was just it's just one of those yeah. ones that has like it you know has that kind of stomp stomp going on and it's easy to sort of bounce to and stuff. So it's got a good groove to it. Yeah. Yeah. And now you pull the knife out of the back thing. <laughs> yeah. We've got this joke. I mean, that's the thing. I, I think they see us have fun on stage, and uh, and we got so many inside jokes going on and stuff now. And uh, and they react. The crowd reacts to that. You know, the crowd's the quickest to say that's fake or it's real. And you know, if the band's having fun, they have fun. You know, like looking at the sessions, no. It's a very organic record. It's a very drum, bass, vocal, guitar, that type of record. There's a lot of loop stuff and what's going on and uh, a lot of different, uh, even electronic or dubstep stuff is being brought into the rock and roll world. Uh, this was very uh, organic and, uh, and even some of the sound effects that are in the background is Mike doing some weird kind of thing that sounds like loops and stuff. So I, I was proud of that. I was like, that's so killer to, you know, it's easy to put in a, you know, sit and program a thing as far as the technologies are out, which is awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, it was really cool to look at everything at all the wave files and say, wow, that was done by hands and, you know, a string or a noise. One of the coolest technology things, you know, uh, was we have one song that, uh, people will think that it's Mike playing a solo. It's actually Adam with a distorted mic. Um, and it goes into a harmony kind of thing with himself. And it's you know, incredible. Incredible. I, I, I can see a lot of bands starting to use that. Yeah. I watched. Well, I, I ended up you know, borrowing that idea from you know, Martin Sexton, who's one of my favorites. You know, and he, he used to do that guitar solos with his voice and stuff. So, But yeah, I mean, as, as for the... Um, the writing process it was uh, it was a little bit of both you know we like Mike would send stuff to me um, I'd come up with an idea send it back to him but I think we got together maybe in total like three times before we went into the studio so yeah so we I mean we used you know we definitely used our own ear at home to send ideas back and forth and stuff but yeah I mean if there was one I again I'd probably say waste my time because I think it's uh it's it's kind of a straightforward love song almost, and it's just lyrically, it's just yeah, it's, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, but it but it's uh, for us, I think for all of us, it's a different it's a different type of song. You know, it's very just uh, it has a really really cool sort of folky weird rock ballad. Yeah, which feel. is strange. That's what you know, 
we went got in the band together talking about all the old school singer songwriter bands that we liked, you know. You know, they, taxis, half of Taxi sang on our bus every day. So, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harry Jeep. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think Waste My Time would be the one, you know. It's, it's straightforward, it's simple, but it's, uh, it's, you know, I think less is more a lot of times the song, so.